waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, the pump it earlier at about 7 a.m. Welcome to Hashtag BH Vote 2013. Today on Rappler, the Philippines' stellar economic growth takes the spotlight at the World Economic Forum on East Asia. Experts and trade ministers across ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, gear up for economic integration in 2015. And the Thai military declares a coup days after imposing martial law. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Once dubbed Asia's sick man, the Philippines' focus on governance is reaping economic benefits. Its stellar economic growth takes the spotlight of the World Economic Forum on East Asia, happening for the first time in more than two decades in Manila. More than 600 political and business heavyweights from around Asia gathered to discuss opportunities for development in the region. In 2013, the Philippines grew 7.2% and won investment grade status from credit rating agencies. A mark of investor confidence. Business leaders say the Philippines could be the next Asian economic miracle. But they add more reforms are needed to speed up inclusive development and make it easier for businessmen to invest in the country. Philippine Long Distance Telephone Company, or PLDT Chair Manny Pangilinan, says the government should focus on, quote, hard developments by being more investment driven. The soft part of development is important. Reforms, governance, and perception of the Philippines improving, right? But it must, there, there are the hard parts of development as well, because it can't be all perception. And the main reason, I believe, that's, that's why your inclusive growth is, is not as inclusive as it should be because we're mainly a consumption-driven economy. And it's time to switch that to an investment-driven economy. Tourism Secretary Mon Jimenez says decision-making in government should not mean slow action. The Philippines is a very real democracy. And very often there is a tremendous temptation to dispense with what would be a sustainable, democratic way of doing things. But does democratic have to mean long? I yes. Do not, I do not give in to the temptation to throw the rule book away. Karim Raslan, chief executive of Malaysia's KRA Group, also says using political capital may be needed to implement reforms, leadership. He adds extending the current six-year term of the president may help speed up development. Democracy is a means, not the end. Therefore, you have to get into the rule book and change the rules. And you have to use the political capital to do that, to make things faster. Yeah. Um, your point on long-term vision, totally right, but then very tough if uh, you can only have a president for six years and he can't do two terms. I think that's another case of the rule book. You should have two terms. So, and I think you do need two terms. One term is not enough. Heads of state at the World Economic Forum on East Asia present their economic goals. All say economic prosperity is the result of a stable socio-political environment. Despite the calamities that struck the Philippines in 2013, Philippine President Benigno Aquino attributes the country's economic growth to good governance and pursuit of wrongdoers. Aquino says the next step is to make economic prosperity more inclusive. We are aware, however, that inclusive growth cannot be achieved simply by delivering to our people the services they rightfully deserve. Government must also actively find ways to create opportunities for the people. This is why inclusive growth is not just a mantra for us. It is the yardstick by which we measure any government undertaking. After all, it is a participatory public, one that is empowered, and one that gives government their trust and confidence, and a government that never misplaces that trust that ultimately makes equitable progress possible. Indonesian President Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono says investing in education and promoting entrepreneurship can help address inequalities. I believe our generation is now endowed with the resources and know-how to beat age-old problems of poverty, deprivation, and conflict. The key challenge in addressing inequality is 
how to ensure that those at the bottom and middle also enjoy the same, if not more, socioeconomic mobility at those, as those at the top. Hence, mobility for all. While the Philippines and Indonesia start to reap the benefits of their earlier efforts, Myanmar is just starting to pick up after years of political isolation. Myanmar had reduced the poverty rate from 32 to 26 percent in 2010, and it has been trying to reduce the poverty rate to 16 percent by 2015. However, challenges are everywhere. Since it has a long-term process, long-term and a sustained political commitment is required. Equitable economic development and the free movement of goods and people. That's the idea behind the regional economic integration by 2015. But is the Philippines ready for this? Tourism Secretary Ramon Jimenez and Finance Secretary Cesar Purisima say the Philippines will benefit from regional integration. Talking about Asia, okay. we are right smack in the middle of everything. So. Okay. Therefore, so we, tourism, are, we are tourism. also going to be a beneficiary of a single ASEAN visa okay. concept and uh, open skies. But Purisima acknowledges there's still work to be done on the level of leadership and implementation. Asia, the 10 countries are very different. The gap between the richest and the poorest is so wide. I mean, uh, look at the industries that were integrated uh, ahead. Look at the tariff uh, uh, levels. Uh, it's down to zero and... Uh, uh, five for most of the tariff uh, uh, lines. Uh, we're moving uh, forward. Uh, we just need it's to never get... quick enough. Air Asia CEO Tony Fernandez says economic integration will mean the efficient use of resources and reduced costs. He says the private sector and the government must be on the same page. Well, I think we're a long way to getting to the perfect scenario, but hey, we're on the, we're on the taxiway. That's a big step. I don't think, you know, five years, six years ago, it was a pipe dream. There's a disconnect between what private industry want and what government are pushing. And then they don't talk to the guys on the ground to really know what needs to be done. Who wins and who loses when the ASEAN economic community emerges in 2015? For Ayala Corporation Chair Jaime Augusto Zobel de Ayala, Competitive businesses will be in a better position to thrive in the regional market. He also says the Philippines has already moved towards integration, although he says not everyone is aware of the broader economic framework. I think so, very much so. I think people have seen this ASEAN economic community as kind of a preparation, a date, and then this, all these things happen. You know, that's not really quite what's been happening. There have been a lot of wins uh, with each passing month, each passing six months, each passing year. We're really moved already. Since anyone in industries that have been very uh, closed uh, will invariably have a tough time adjusting. Well, I think the ones who will lose are the ones who have been comfortable or thrived in a highly protective environment. Zabel de Ayala also says he is optimistic about the Philippines sustaining its economic growth. He says the government needs to invest in infrastructure to support growth and to not be complacent. The key is to use good times to prepare uh, for the challenges ahead. Uh, but that having been said, um, you know, the Philippines has been having just a great run. And, uh, the first couple of years are building confidence and momentum. I think there's a lot of momentum now. The story of the country is good. The credibility is there. Uh, the key is really to take that momentum and just give it everything you've got all the way to the end. SM Investment Corporation Vice Chairman Tessie C. Kosson says integration within ASEAN will not immediately happen with the December 2015 deadline. She says this will be a period of heightened awareness, but the changes will happen in five years. Uh, I think right now it's more of awareness. The actual integrations may come five years later, which is actually the original date of integration. For us, we like it in the sense that we would be able to, uh, to see more people coming in and the business models will evolve. Uh, there will be more cooperations uh, among, among uh, businesses in this, in this region, uh, but of course there will be more competitions. 
What does the Philippines need to do to sustain its growth? Finance Secretary Cesar Purisima says the Aquino administration is moving towards institutionalizing reforms to make development inclusive. Purisima says it's important that citizens feel the effects of what he calls good governance under Aquino. Well, I think um, one, uh, that the people continue to feel the difference of good and bad governance in their own lives. Because I think ultimately, that is what will assure us that we can sustain this. Because if the people know that good governance is actually good for them, then they will demand more of it. Purisima also acknowledges the negative impact of corruption on economic growth. He says the problem is rooted in a system that does not encourage excellence. There are different types of corruption. There's maybe 90% based on need, mm -hmm. because they have families, they have needs, no? and I don't excuse that. Mm -hmm. And then there's 10% based on greed. But the one based on need, mm -hmm. we can address it with uh, you know, a performance-based mm -hmm. compensation system, an incentive-based system. Yes. Uh, corruption is a problem, and the root probably is uh, uh, a system that doesn't recognize performance, that doesn't uh, 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 encourage meritocracy. Will Asia be able to keep its momentum? Experts identify key areas of focus for the region's sustainable growth, like infrastructure, political stability, peace and security, the growth of the middle class, and better regional connectivity. With plans for an integrated ASEAN in 2015, trade ministers from across the region discuss investment challenges and opportunities. Indonesia's Trade Minister Mohamed Lutfi says the rapid growth of Indonesia's middle class is a good opportunity for manufacturers to come in. Singapore's Finance and Transport Senior Minister Josephine Cho emphasizes the need for connectivity across the ASEAN region. While it's a challenge at the moment, Cho says connectivity is central to the vision of a successful economic integration. In fact, um, there is a, a master plan for ASEAN uh, connectivity that has three key priority areas. One is we need land connectivity. Um, it's okay to have more cars and more vehicles, provided we have the roads to service them. Um, another very important aspect is that um, we also need rail connectivity. And so land connectivity as part of ASEAN connectivity is one area that has got challenges, but I also think tremendous opportunities. I think in today's world, given the kind of technological advances that we are seeing, uh, broadband, uh, cyber connectivity is another very important area. After climbing five notches to 38th spot last year, the Philippines slides to 42nd place in the 2014 IMD World Competitiveness Yearbook Ranking. The ranking is based on the perceptions of 60 economies as a place to do business. In a statement, IMD says most big emerging markets slid in the rankings because of slow economic growth and inadequate infrastructure. IMD names five challenges facing the Philippines in 2014. Infrastructure, corruption, unemployment and underemployment, an, underdeveloped, an undeveloped financial system and natural disasters. During a discussion on transparency at the World Economic Forum, Budget Secretary Butch Abad is put on the spot with a question about the pork barrel scam. Abad was named as one of the officials who colluded to divert public funds to fake non-governmental organizations in exchange for kickbacks. A reporter from the Wall Street Journal asked about the government's fight against corruption after Abad talked about good governance initiatives. The cabinet secretary says the fact that the expos happened during the Aquino administration shows transparency. He adds, the president has allowed a system that can talk about it and that prosecutes the guilty. Creating an environment and lowering tolerance for it is something this administration has made happen. The camp of alleged pork barrel mastermind Janet Limnapola says it won't be able to submit her affidavit at this point because of her medical problems. Napolis's counsel, Bruce Rivera, says, Mrs. Napolis is sick. How can she look at the documents? Her doctors won't let us. Almost a month after having a hysterectomy at the Makati Hospital, doctors discovered abnormal vaginal bleeding. A Makati Regional Trial Court earlier ordered her brought back to her detention center in Laguna before Friday. But the bleeding prompts doctors to withdraw Napolis's discharge order. Justice Secretary Lila de Lima says she will ask for the deadline for the affidavit to be moved to Monday. Senator T.J. Gangona grants de Lima's request, saying it was a valid reason. 
The Senate orders Justice Secretary Lila de Lima to submit the digital files of whistleblower Benner Lloyd. De Lima and the National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, has until May 28 to produce a copy of the contents of Lloyd's hard drive. Lloyd's digital files became the subject of controversy after the Philippine Daily Inquirer released reports about the contents of the hard drive. Records from Lewis' hard disk drive supposedly detailed the financial transactions of alleged scam mastermind Janet Napolis. Thailand Army Chief General Prayut Chanocho announces a military coup on live TV Thursday. This is the 12th successful military coup Thailand has had since 1932. Prayut says the military plans to restore order and implement political reforms. The military imposed martial law Tuesday but denied it was a coup. This comes after the ouster of Prime Minister Ying Lak Shinawat from office earlier this month for alleged abuse of power. Thailand's been embroiled in a power struggle since the military ousted Ying Lak's brother Thaksin as Prime Minister in 2006. Vietnam is considering legal actions against China after the rising superpower deployed an oil rig in the disputed South China Sea. On Thursday, Reuters reports Vietnam Prime Minister Nguyen Tan Dung is considering, quote, various defense options including legal actions in accordance with international law. This comes after Dung issued a joint statement along with Philippine President Benigno Aquino to show deep concern over China's moves. Dung criticizes China's deployment of an oil rig and vessels near the disputed Paracel Islands in the South China Sea. During the World Economic Forum on East Asia, Dung hits China's aggressive actions despite Vietnam's protests. Dung says Vietnam, quote, always wants peace and friendship, but says China has continued to use force. One is peace and friendship. We have exercised utmost restraint and exhausted all dialogue channels to communicate with Chinese authorities of different levels, demanding China to immediately withdraw its drilling rig. However, up to now, China not only failed to respond to Vietnam's illegitimate demand on the country, it has been slandering and blaming Vietnam while continuing to use force. Serious acts of intimidation and violation. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today. A list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 8, U.S. online giant eBay says cyber attackers broke into its database with customer names, passwords, and other personal data earlier this year. The attack potentially affected eBay's 128 million active users. At number 9, Former French President Nicolas Sarkozy calls for the end of Europe's visa-free Schengen area. He pushes for the creation of a Franco-German economic bloc at the heart of the Eurozone. In an opinion piece in a French magazine, Sarkozy says Europe's migration policy is a failure. He says the existing Schengen must be replaced by Schengen II, where member countries can join only if they previously agreed to do the same to the same immigration policy. And at number 10. Star Wars fans now have a chance to appear in upcoming installment, Star Wars Episode 7. For each $10 contribution to the campaign dubbed Star Wars Force for Change, participants will be automatically entered for a chance to win this once-in-a-lifetime experience. Director J.J. Abrams says the campaign is dedicated to finding creative solutions to some of the world's biggest problems. The campaign runs from May 21, 2014, to July 18, 2014. I think that must be May 12, 2014 to, oh sorry, May 21 to July 12. Okay, well, for the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our readers and viewers the most emotionally. If you take a look, these 10 stories have gotten the most number of votes on their mood meter. Here you go. Um, in the last 24 hours, interestingly enough, you have Taiwan, this just happened last night. Taiwan subway stabbing uh, kills four, hurts 21. Uh, you have a 52% sad. That gray also coming out in the story that's gotten the most number of votes. What they don't tell you about the OFW life. You have 9% inspired. This is a piece by Rappler columnist Shakira Sison. 
74% sad, that sadness bringing out the mood of the day. Today, most people are sad. Well, that is Rappler's newscast for today, Thursday, May 22, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today. Thank you.